Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at Hornby's mixed traffic digital train set. This is Hornby Reference R1236 and it's a set I've been wanting to take a look at since I got back into the hobby because there are a couple of things about it that make it special. Firstly, it comes with two locomotives, which is pretty cool and fairly unusual for a train set. Secondly, this is a fully digital train set and despite the growing popularity of digital control, it's still not very common to see this. It comes with the Hornby Select digital controller, which I've been wanting to try out, and both of the models come pre-fitted with decoders. I love digital control and it's great to see Hornby embracing it in their train sets. Digital control allows you to run two trains on the same piece of track at the same time completely independently, which is obviously a lot more realistic and can be a lot more fun. I think the fact that this contains two locomotives and a digital controller is reflected in the retail price and this has a recommended retail price of £209.99 which is obviously very expensive. However, most retailers are doing this discounted and I managed to pick it up for just over £175. So let's open it up, see what we get and check if that's good value. So this set comes packaged in the new environmentally friendly pulp tray which I must say I think is a lot better than the old style polystyrene trays. The polystyrene trays were really easy to damage, but this feels really sturdy. So working our way round, we've got a power adapter in the top left hand corner, then over on its right we've got a what looks to be a quite generous amount of track work. Below that we've got the Hornby Select controller. Coming round we've got some wagons in there hidden under some tissue paper, we'll take a look at those later. And then finally our two locomotives. And let's start by looking at those. They've both got 060 wheel arrangements and they're both classic locomotives, but they represent very different eras. Let's start with the Class 08 diesel shunter. I'm really glad they decided to include a Class 08 as they're still a pretty common sight on heritage railways and I don't already have one in this red and grey colour combination. These locomotives were built in the 1950s. This one comes with running number 08965 and it's got the double arrow British Rail logo on either side. Overall, this is a fairly basic model and there's not a huge amount of detail. What detail there is, is moulded onto the plastic. But that makes it perfect for these kind of sets. You can play with this as much as you like without worrying about damaging delicate parts. What detail there is seems to have been nicely applied. The black and yellow stripes at the rear, the handrails have been painted and there are warning notices running around the sides. The other loco is a Great Western Railways Class 2721 Pannier Tank steam locomotive. These were built at the end of the 1800s. Daniel Tarasov asked me if I had a pannier tank to review and now I do, so here you go. It comes in the classic Great Western Green with the gold GWR branding. Being a steam engine, there's quite a bit more detail than on the diesel. And I'm actually really impressed. We've got separately fitted rails, painted valves, whistle and chimney. There's molded cab detail and coal in the bunker. The running numbers printed on the buffer beams and although the buffers aren't sprung, they are metal. Overall, this is a really nice train set model. So let's take a look at the wagons. Starting with the private owner 7 plank wagon and I really like this one. You've got the WR Davies & Co branding on the sides, you've got the wagon number, the frame is in the black and then you've got the bright blue planks down the sides. You've got the moulded brakes, the moulded suspension and the little coupling hooks on either end and overall I think this is a really nice little wagon. Next up we've got the 12 ton box van, not quite as exciting as the wagon, no branding on the side and unfortunately the doors don't open. We do have some printed detail and again the moulding on the frame is pretty good. Next up we've got the iron ore tipler wagon, again I really like this one, lots of printed detail and the frame looks really good. Finally, we've got the private owner tanker wagon branded with the Acme Kerosene and it's not often I say this, but I really can't stand this wagon. The level of detail on the frame's okay, but the tanker body to me looks more like a toy than a model. It looks and feels really plasticky. There's not a huge amount of detail on it. What detail there is, such as the ladder, 
again, is really plasticky and doesn't look realistic at all. This is a starter train set, so maybe I'm expecting a little bit too much, or maybe I've just got something against tanker wagons. Anyway, three good wagons out of four isn't too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's look at the track. We get a loop of track, but it also comes with track pack A, which is a siding with a buffer stop. And again, just to highlight that this set is fully digital, the point is pre-fitted with the clips needed to provide power to the siding, even when the point is set against it. So you can always run a loco that's in this siding. You also get the standard accessories pack, which comes with most train sets at the moment. That includes the instructions, a re-railer to get your models easily onto the rails, and a track map. I've said it before, I really like the Hornby track map. I think it's a really quick, easy, cheap way of bringing life to a train set. I imagine a lot of people will be running these train sets on the floor, potentially on carpet. So another benefit of the track mat is that if you put this down first, it will stop any bits of dirt or fluff from finding their way into your locomotives. And here's the controller, a Hornby Select. I've only ever used the Arduino-based DCC++ control system before, and I've been wanting to try this controller for a while. So let's go and put our locomotives on the rolling road to see how they run and at the same time we can see how easy it is to program them with the select controller. So I've got the select plugged in and connected to the rolling road. By default the locomotive should be on address 3 so let's turn the dial and see what happens. That's all working really nicely so let's see how slow this can go. See if we can turn this right down to the lowest marker. That's pretty impressive, that's still turning. So it's somewhere around there. That's impressively slow. The other cool thing about digital is that they have realistic acceleration and deceleration built in. So if we quickly turn the speed up, you should see that the motor doesn't respond immediately, it builds up the speed. The rate of acceleration deceleration is actually something that can be changed for each individual locomotive. We can see it again if I quickly set the speed to zero. And if I turn it up again, it takes a second to accelerate. Okay, now let's change the loco address. We just hold down the select button until LA appears on the screen, type in the new address which is 4 and press select again to store it. So the decoder in the locomotive should have stored 4, if we turn the dial it all works. Let's turn that off and try the class 08 which will be on the default address 3 again. So to change address, we press 3 and hit select. And if we turn the dial, let's see what happens. And that's all working. These locos have the same motor, so we can expect the same slow speed performance. And they've also got the same decoder, so the default settings for acceleration and deceleration would be the same. But let's give it a go and see how slow this class 08 can go. The Select may not have all the features of a more advanced digital control system, but it's really easy to set up and use, and I quite like it. But is this all good value? Well, I picked my setup for £175, and the Hornby Select alone would cost you around about £100. Each decoder costs around £15, and you get two of those, so just for the controllers and decoders, you're getting £130 worth of stuff, which means you're paying roughly £45 for two locomotives, wagons, and all the track, and that is exceptionally good value. So overall, if you're looking for a starter set and a way into digital control, then this is a great option, and it is also fantastic value. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a like and a subscribe. As usual, I will leave you with some shots of the Class 08 and the Pannier Tank running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you again soon.